What is going on YouTube? So coming back today with my next NFL draft scouting report. So I just did my Vernon Hargraves uh, not too long ago and wanted to do my Carson Wentz. So done with the corners, uh, Jalen Ramsey and Vernon Hargraves and going to start with the quarterbacks. So um, Carson Wentz, guy that you can do these scouting reports all day and you can look at his limited film all day and you can look at his combine, his all that stuff. You're not going to be able to get a good as good of a read on him as you will Jared Goff and Paxton Lynch. It's just not going to happen. They just they just got so much more exposure. They were more in the media spotlight and they had I mean they they were more under scrutiny. They were put under more pressure and it's like I said for Carson Wentz, most of it's just speculation. Now, Moving to some of his background information and stats. So he's 6'6", 235 pounds, senior quarterback from North Dakota State University. Uh, he's from Bismarck, North Dakota, and um, played all four years. Was not a starter, was not a starter until 2014, um, which was really his only full season, which is another concern. Um, he threw for, I believe, where is the... 5,115 yards and um, 45 touchdowns to 14 interceptions um, throughout his career. His best year, like I said, was 2014. Even 2015, he had he was very good while he was playing. 17 touchdowns to only four interceptions with 1,651 yards. Uh, shows his good decision making. So, like I said, not a whole lot of exposure in college, and he was playing in the FCS anyway. Granted, I do believe he brought home two, two or three national championships while he was there. Um, so, get into the strengths, including this past year. Get into the strengths. First one is he has very good arm strength. Uh, the dude can spin the ball. Like, if you saw him uh, at his pro day, uh, which, honestly, a lot of people did not because a lot of scouts did not make it there, and um, it was apparently snowed in. Um, combine, same thing. Senior bowl was really his coming out party, and um, it Sometimes you can just notice. There's some guys that are just above and beyond with arm strength that you can just tell on the spot. Um, I'm not going to say he's like a Jay Cutler type with arm strength, but um, the arm strength comparisons to Andrew Luck are definitely, uh, definitely valid, at least in that sense of, in that sort of, or in that sense of attributes. So, second strength is he is very accurate. Like I said, I highlighted the fact that this past year he threw 17 touchdowns to only four interceptions while he was under pressure a lot of the time. Good decision making to go along with that. Um, I mean, to be honest, his worst year was 25 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. Granted, not fantastic, but also definitely not terrible. Um, I mean, he's a mobile quarterback. He can throw on the run well. I'm going to actually get to that later. But um, the combination of accuracy and power is hard to find and is a lot of the reason why the speculation and the hype is so great on Carson Wentz right now. So, third strength is he's got a or he's got very good athleticism for a quarterback. Like I said, he can evade or um, he can evade the pocket and throw on the run. Uh, he runs a decent forty time around four seven five. I believe his official is four seven seven, which isn't like blazing for a quarterback, but it is faster than Jared Goff. Um, I believe it's about on par with Paxton Lynch. I believe it actually was a little bit faster. You know, Goff was around like a four eight two or a four eight three. Um, and for a guy that big, having that type of athleticism and like somewhat of a somewhat elusiveness in the pocket is very valuable. So, four strength is he's poised in the pocket and he throws well on the run. Like I said, he can step up, he avoids sacks well, he's elusive. Uh, he throws well on on the run. When he had to make throws off his back foot, he actually had the power to do it and the uh, football IQ, the poise to be able to um, still slot it in there if he had to throw off his back foot and he knew the receiver was open. Again, he's got all the makings of a very good NFL quarterback. Um, he's got probably a two-page list long or two-page long list of strengths if you actually sit down and you know look at all of all of the film and um, stats you can. But next strength is his high football IQ and high character. I mean, this is a dude that fought back from injury this year, that fought his entire time in North Dakota State to get time as a starting quarterback. Um, he, uh, like I said, he's got high football IQ. He knows how to get it done as a quarterback. And from what I've heard, he's very humble, uh, got high character, and will be a great leader in the NFL. So get into his weaknesses. The first one is 
the one that I've been talking about a lot, is lack of competition in spotlighting college. Like I said, I mean, there's FCS quarterbacks that are successful at the NFL level. Joe Flacco, um, Tony Romo, just to name a few. It, it, it happens, like, I mean, sometimes guys just go to the FCS level and are some of the best quarterbacks in college football. Um, granted, North Dakota State's a team that actually had top 25 votes at one point um, in the FBS poll or in the AP Top 25 as an FCS team. They beat a lot of good FBS teams in the last four years. They're very, very good team. They're by far the best FCS team in the last five years. And um, to say that he hasn't um, that he hasn't been playing with high-level talent it would obviously be um, shorting North Dakota State a little bit. But like I said, you're in the FCS, you're not going to get as much media exposure. Uh, you're not going to be under as much scrutiny. You're not going to be, you're not going to get as much, or you're not going to get as much film on you as you would like, especially, you. I mean, he wasn't like a three or four year starter. He started for like a year and a half, um, including his injury time. So like I said, uh, that could be a concern just because like I said, Jared Goff, a guy that I believe was a three year starter, uh, Paxton Lynch was a guy that was heavily, um, I would say heavily scrutinized, but heavily analyzed this year. Um, put in the spotlight very early with Memphis. So, um, second one, or second weakness, I guess the first one's not really a weakness so much as a red flag, but second weakness is he needs to fill out his frame. Um, I think that'll come along. That's just something that naturally happens when you come out of college. I don't think that's going to be a huge concern. I'd say around two, 240 to 250 would be a desired weight. Honestly, there's been some weights that have him as low as 230. Uh, I think they're around 235 would be where he's at right now. But if he is going to play more physical style in the NFL, you do want to put on a little bit more weight to be able to take those hits a little bit better, especially if you're going to be like a top five pick. So the last one is durability concerns. So I mentioned this. Um, he didn't start all four years. He start, I mean, he had a pretty good 2014. Uh, was injured for a lot of 2015. Now, it's, it's the same thing when you see any quarterback that's uh, had some time injured. I think it'll be fine. Like I said, this is a dude that is hyped up because it's hard to find weaknesses in his game. Uh, like I said, they might show through when it comes to NFL time. It's hard to tell. But as of right now, he did miss his last – or he did miss like six or seven games at least last year. And, um, again – Injuries like that always present a red flag, especially to the quarterback position. Um, you draft a guy that high, you don't ever want to see him on the IR. All right, so that concludes my strengths and weaknesses portion of the video. Now, talk about where I think he fits in best. Pretty much every mock draft I've had up to this point has him going number two to the Cleveland Browns. Um, I'm not, I mean, the, the Rams trade through the whole thing into a debacle. I have no idea where the Rams are going to go. I'll be honest. My whole take on the Rams trade is if you're going to trade up that far to number one, you I don't think you trade up for Jared Goff because I don't think the Browns were going to take Goff. I think if you want to take Jared Goff, you trade up to like five, maybe four, and then you'll be able to get him and you don't have to give up nearly as much. But Carson Wentz is a guy that probably was not going to make it out of the top three. And um, I think if you're going to trade up for a guy – Carson Wentz would be the guy. Um, I think he'd be a good. I think I honestly think he'd be a better fit in the Brown or in the Rams system than the Browns. I hope to God, I really do that he doesn't go to the Browns. Man, I hope that no one goes to the Browns. If I'm honest, like just for the sake of a quarterback's career. But I like what he will be able to do in Los Angeles if he does get drafted there. He can make use of a bunch. Of receivers with speed now Tavon Austin most notably I think the Rams still need to go out and get another receiver and Carson Wentz is a guy that can make a bunch of receivers around him better I think if he ends up in a situation like he will with the Rams I mean again this is an offense that's got some talent on it already with Todd Gurley um, I think getting to learn under uh, a guy that's had a little bit of NFL experience and playoff experience in Nick Foles um, at least having some competition to push him even further is going to help out a lot also. Um, also, Case Keenum, I guess, is going to be a little bit of competition too. But when I'm talking about or talking about NFL stat projections, I think if he gets drafted, let's say that my last mock draft does not play out and um, 
where everyone, I guess the favorite for Ezekiel Elliott to go to the Eagles right now, and then the favorite for uh, Carson Wentz to go to the Rams right now plays out. I think those guys immediately become the two favorites for um, offensive rookies of the year. Obviously, that's NFC. Um, if Carson Wentz even goes to the AFC, I think you immediately slot him as the favorite for AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year. Like I said, he's a guy that will put up big stats next year regardless. I think that – I really think that he – while he is a big boomer bust just in the minds of a lot of people just because like the fact of not having a whole lot of exposure in college and not having a whole lot of information about him before really his, uh, his senior bowl coming out party – um, again, that's a, th that is a big red flag. All right. So that pretty much does it for this video. Like I said, Carson Wentz is an interesting guy to talk about. Maybe the most intriguing prospect in the draft and, um, should be interesting to see where he goes on draft day, whether he does go one or two. I don't think he makes it out of spot number two. Now I think one or two or one, two is going to be quarterbacks at this point, unless there's like another blockbuster trade. But like I said, that pretty much does it for this video. Um, did one earlier today, Vernon Hargraves. That and Jalen Ramsey will be in the outro as well as the entire playlist in the description below. Tomorrow I'll be coming back with Jared Goff, so talk about the other um, other top end quarterback, and then after that we'll do Paxton Lynch. And I've been thinking about adding a few more quarterbacks because uh, I think Christian Hackenberg and Connor Cook will play bigger roles in the NFL than a lot of people think they will, and maybe even Cardell Jones. I when I did my quarterback list. Um, I did only originally have Carson Wentz, Jared Goff, and Paxton Lynch since they are pretty much the clear-cut top three. But like I said, I might add a few more. So like I said, I'll put the link to the entire or to the entire playlist in the description below. Um, Vernon Hargraves, Jalen Ramsey, Ezekiel Elliott, and Derek Henry are the ones done so far. So that's pretty much it. See ya. So my opinion, the second best corner in the draft. Um, I think he'll probably be the second corner off the boards also. So getting a little bit of his background stats or background information and stats. So he's a five foot ten, two hundred five pound corner out of Florida. He's from Tampa. And